Just as all of us are programmed to seek social interaction, connection, and support from other people, at the same time, we are individuals and can choose to maintain boundaries. Today, we are going to talk about another important aspect of the interpersonal effectiveness module, boundaries. To be effective in communicating assertively, we have to be mindful of the boundaries that exist between us and other people. If the boundaries are too rigid and the person doesn't let other people in, that gets in the way of fostering quality relationships. In a similar way, if the person becomes too enmeshed with other people, the boundaries are too permeable, they won't protect us. Interpersonal boundaries. Step one, types of boundaries. In the first step, we will help you get introduced to several different types of boundaries that exist in relationships. They are, Psychological boundaries means whether or not you share information about yourself, different opinions, thoughts, and beliefs you have. Emotional boundaries refers to whether or not, or how much, you let other people approach you emotionally, including whether or not you let other people affect your emotions, like making you feel joyful or guilty. Physical boundaries refers to any activity regarding your body, whether or not you let a certain person touch you, including any sexual activity. Step two, being mindful of the situation. Next time when you have a conversation with someone, try to become mindful of the situation. Observe how much they are sharing, what type of information they are sharing, what are you sharing? How are you affecting each other emotionally? What are your physical boundaries? How much eye contact is there? How far apart are you seated? Do you touch each other as you talk? Being mindful of the boundaries doesn't mean that this is where the boundary should be. You might choose to change the boundaries if you think it would be helpful to you and the relationship. Step three, negotiating boundaries. Once you are aware of the present boundaries in your relationship, you might observe someone trying to change the boundaries or you might want to make changes in the boundaries. You might want more flexible boundaries. You want to share more information, let the other person affect you emotionally, or move closer to them. You might also want a more rigid boundary, closing off certain topics, creating more emotional distance, or physically distancing yourself. These boundary negotiations aren't always explicitly discussed. They often happen when one person attempts to move the boundary and the other person either consents, is passive, or resists. For example, you might have a coworker who you previously only talked to about work matters. Then one day, they might share a problem they are having in their personal life. You might negotiate the boundary by continuing the discussion and sharing something from your personal life. You might say nothing, or you might redirect the conversation back to work. You can also explicitly negotiate the boundary. For example, you might tell someone that you are glad they shared their personal problem with you, or that you want to keep the conversation focused on work. It is also important to note that boundaries aren't fixed. Just because you set boundaries in one place, it doesn't mean you can't change the boundary in the future. Now that you are familiar with all the steps from the interpersonal boundaries exercise, think about how this applies to one of your relationships. What are the type of boundaries in the relationship? How have the boundaries been negotiated in the past? How might you change the boundaries in the future? Take your time to think about it, pause the video, and write down the answers in the worksheet. Great job, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This was the exercise, Interpersonal Boundaries. See you in the next video.